Well, former Palestinian Authority spokesperson Noor Ode joins me now to discuss everything that's going on. A lot to talk about. If we could start with what we've heard in the last hour from the UN Security Council, the Palestinian ambassador giving a really impassioned speech, issuing an ultimatum really to the world, to the United States. What do you make of his speech and do you feel like it will make any difference? Well, you know, I don't think it was an ultimatum. I think it is important to understand that this international system either works for everyone or doesn't work at all. And right now it has failed. It has failed miserably. It has let down humanity and it has allowed a genocide to continue live on air in front of the whole world to see. It has failed the Palestinian people since its inception. And so it is high time, I think, for the member states, who, some of whom are involved and shouldn't even have the right to vote on resolutions like this, to understand that there are responsibilities, that Palestinian lives are not expendable, that Israeli exceptionalism is undermining and destroying the international system upon which international security rests. So this is, I think, an important meeting. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I do not see that this message will resonate enough among the powers that have the veto power, especially the United States, who seems to be determined to allow Israel to continue acting like a rogue state, to continue enjoying impunity, and to continue committing ge genocide um, all the way until it could potentially displace the population of the Gaza Strip into the sea or into the Sinai. And turning now to the fighting inside of Gaza, we've been hearing about some intense clashes today. The US Secretary of State says, and I quote, that there's a gap between the intention of protecting civilians and what's happening on the ground. Do you buy that, that effectively there's an intention that's not being carried out? No, I do not buy it, and I don't think anybody serious can buy it. When 70% of the casualties are women and children, and that's not to say that the remainder are all fighters, then the intention is to kill civilians. Uh, and to kind of spin it around and talk about intentions of not harming civilians is, um, in my opinion, not just cheap propaganda, it is patronizing, and it is an insult to the intelligence and to the humanity of those who have been outraged by this mass slaughter of Palestinians over the past two months, um, including including uh, the base of the Democratic Party in the United States and many within the State Department and the White House who have been absolutely shattered by the lack of moral um, direction of the policy of this White House. And the other thing that we've seen today is those quite troubling pictures of Palestinian men in Gaza look like they've been detained, they've been stripped down to their underwear and are sat on the floor before being taken off in military vehicles. What did you make of those pictures? It's absolutely horrific. It is inhumane treatment. And we've been hearing from eyewitnesses, from survivors, from the few who've been allowed to come home from these men about the abuse, the mistreatment, the uh, the beatings, the humiliation. The Israeli army, um, uh, the soldiers have been boasting and, uh, about the torture and about the abuse they've been subjecting Palestinians in Gaza to online, on social media. They have no hesitation to um, uh, share those degrading videos. Uh, we saw that uh, from the beginning of the war, from October 7th all the way until today. These are civilians. Some of them were young, as young as 12 years old. They, um, it, it, um, at least one prominent uh, journalist was identified among them. They were sheltering in a UN school um, and they were rounded up, stripped naked, herded into trucks like cattle and taken inside Israel. Um, and there are several, several grave violations of international law were involved in just that, those actions, let alone the beatings and the humiliation. Israel first claimed 
that they were Hamas fighters who surrendered, and then it had to walk back this lie as it has been walking back many lies uh, before. The fact that this is happening on such a massive scale, and the fact that we're hearing from survivors in northern Gaza in particular, horror stories about executions, about people uh, killed while raising white flags, about uh, families terrorized with Israeli soldiers entering their homes in Gaza City and in the north. All of these are are being underreported precisely because Israel made it deadly dangerous for journalists to remain in the north. It made the uh, northern Gaza almost unlivable by destroying the hospitals and by depriving uh, that entire area, hundreds of thousands of people, of water and food. They are starving. And those who remain, remain because they have no other options and they have nowhere to go. And their deaths will be on the uh, on the international community, which is allowing all of these indignities to happen. Noor Oday, a former Palestinian Authority spokesperson, really grateful for you for joining us.